it was 1962. I was 22 years old. I was rushed to the emergency room with a fever of 105 and blood poisoning. I had had an illegal abortion. Blindfolded, without anesthetic, I never saw the face of the abortionist. My own doctor, who refused to provide a safe abortion, would now try to save my life. Because I had good medical care, I survived. Many women died. I was 17 years old. I was married. And 10 months after I was married, I had a baby girl. She was very ill, very jaundiced. And the doctor told me, the OBGYN who had delivered her, told me that if I ever had another child, I would die. Three months later, I was pregnant again. And I was absolutely terrified. So I went back to him and I said, am I pregnant? And he said, yes. And he said, I told you not to get pregnant. And I said, but you didn't tell me how not to. I couldn't have that baby because if I did and I died, who would take care of the little baby I had. And so I asked the young women where I worked, and they sent me to a woman, and she put, I think it was a strip of slippery elm bark up my uterus. Two days later, I had a screaming fever, and I was in such pain. And so I went back out to see this woman, and she said, I told you not to come back. And I said, I have nowhere else to go. And she put her arms around me like that, and she just held me up to her chest for a minute. And she said, honey, did you think it was so easy to be a woman? Everyone told me that if I had any sense, I wouldn't look at the baby. I would just let them take it away, and I'd never look at the baby. But I did. I, I, let them bring the baby to me, and I held the baby. Rosalie had been raped by an older man. She decided to go to a home for unwed mothers and then give the baby up for adoption. And I owed some money for my board and room and medical, and so I stayed for a while, and I worked in the nursery to work the money off, and I was just around babies all the time. And I actually held a baby before they took it Oh, God. <sighs> and anybody who would think that would be a great way to solve the problem is just... <sighs> I mean, you take a child who doesn't even know her own mind, 17-year-old young woman and ask her to carry a baby in her body till for nine months and then give birth to it and then just give it away like it's like it's nothing Sherry Finkbein was the host of television's romper room she was pregnant with her fifth child when she discovered that the drug she'd been taking for morning sickness, thalidomide, could cause severe birth defects. Arizona law allowed abortions only if a woman's life was in danger. Sherry's doctor diagnosed her as a potential suicide so he could arrange a hospital abortion. Everything would have been fine if I didn't have this fantastic feeling that I had to warn other people about this horrendous drug. Sherry called the local newspaper several days before the scheduled operation. She asked that her name not be used. The next day, her doctor called to say that the abortion had been canceled. And they said the news is went out on the Associated Press and 
were getting calls from all over the world, somebody went into the county attorney's office and said they'd like to make a citizen's arrest on the hospital and on the woman who's going to have that termination. The whole world watched as Sherry and her husband searched for a doctor who would help. Finally, they went to Sweden, where abortion was legal. When we came back from Sweden, we heard that somebody else was now doing romper room and that they felt I was unfit to handle children. We had received so many death threats that the FBI was called. They came because people threatened to cut off the arms and legs of my existing children. Now that it's all over, do you still think that you've done the right thing? More than ever. Something within me, I don't know if it was womanly intuition or the God inside of me said, don't have this baby, and I didn't, and uh, now I know it was the right decision. Lola Huth was the lead dancer of the Jose Limon Dance Company. She was married and the mother of a baby girl when she died from a self-induced abortion. Even though she was using an IUD for birth control, Lola became pregnant. A doctor told her that the IUD would probably cause the baby to be deformed, but that removing it might cause a miscarriage. She decided to have the IUD removed. She went back for the scheduled appointment, and he said, I'm sorry, I have consulted with colleagues, and I cannot do anything that could implicate me in an illegal act. And she said, well, then I'm inclined to believe I will do it myself. And he said, all right, well, I'll tell you what to do. I'll tell you how to do it. And when you're in the process of miscarriage, you can call me, you can go to the hospital, and then I'll be able to help you without jeopardizing my own position. She punctured a vein and got air into her bloodstream. You know, we have to talk about this. It's important. You know, that it isn't just some anonymous person that nobody knows who's had an abortion, but people right next to us in our community, in our lives, and some of them don't survive.